We're now going to talk about linear approximation for functions of two variables. But we first need a new definition. So let f be a function of two variables. Definition. So f is differentiable at the point x0, y0, if what? So first of all, the partial derivatives at this point are defined. But that's not all. And there exist functions epsilon 1 and epsilon 2 such that we have the following equation. So f of x0 plus delta x comma y0 plus delta y equals f of x0 y0 plus f of x of x0 y0 delta x plus f y of x0 y0 times delta y, and then there's more, plus epsilon 1 of delta x delta y times delta x plus epsilon 2 of delta x times delta y times delta y. So that's the equation. And then we're not done with the definition, where the limit as delta x and delta y go to 0, 0, the epsilon 1 of delta x delta y, and also the limit as delta x and delta y go to 0, 0, of epsilon 2 of delta x delta y equals 0. Okay, that's the end of the definition. Um, this is slightly more complicated than the standard definition, but it, it will be convenient to write it this way, as we'll see. Okay, so this is a complicated equation. What is going on here? So observe so if epsilon 1 and epsilon 2 are equal to 0, then what does this equation say? Um, this equation says that the graph z equals f of x, y is the same as the tangent plane to the graph at x0, y0, z0 equals f of x0, y0. Why is that? Um, well, you just write delta x equals x minus x0, and delta y equals y minus y0, and delta z equals z minus z0. <clears throat> and if you do this, then the equation for the tangent plane is delta z equals fx of x0, y0 times delta x plus fy of x0, y0 times delta y. It's a slight shorthand for the equation for the tangent plane that we wrote before. Okay, and then if you look at this equation up here, if these epsilon terms are 0, then this says that 
f of our point x, y minus f for a point x, zero, y, zero, so that's the delta z, is equal to this plus that, right? So if the epsilons are zero, this equation says that the graph of f is a plane, and it's equal to that tangent plane. Now, in general, if f is not a linear function, its graph will not be a plane. However, we're saying that the deviation of the graph from a plane is given by these functions epsilon times delta x, epsilon 1 times delta x, and epsilon 2 times delta y, where these functions epsilon 1 and epsilon 2 go to 0 as delta x and delta y go to 0. So that means, intuitively, that the graph of f is well approximated by its tangent plane. So the slogan is that if a function is differentiable, then the graph is well approximated by the tangent plane. More precisely, if f is differentiable at the point x0, y0, the intuitive meaning is that the graph of f near the point x0, y0, z0 equals f of x0, y0 is well approximated by the tangent plane to the graph at this point. Now, a little warning is that to show that a function is differentiable at a point, it's not enough to check that the partial derivatives are defined at that point, because the definition had this additional condition with the epsilon 1 and epsilon 2. So here's an example to show you why this is not sufficient. So let's consider the function f of x, y equals the cube root of x times the cube root of y. And let's look at the point x0, y0 equals the origin. Now, first observe that the partial derivatives of f are well defined at this point, and they're both equal to 0. Why is that? Well, that's because f equals 0 on the axes. Okay. So if you just calculate the partial derivatives using the usual formulas, you'll get that fx equals one-third x to the minus two-thirds y to the one-third. And you might worry that this is not defined when x equals zero, so there's some problem with this. But if you go back to the original definition of the partial derivative, if you're calculating fx, then what you're doing is holding y fixed, y fixed equal to zero, and varying x and calculating the derivative. And by the definition of f, if y equals zero, then f equals zero. So when you vary x along the x-axis, the function always zero, so the partial derivative is zero. And likewise, f y is zero, because when I said x equal to zero, f is equal to zero. Okay, so the partial derivatives are perfectly well defined, but f is not differentiable at this point. Why not? Well, let's consider the line y equals x. And I'll think of this as a parameterized curve. So consider the curve x equals t, y equals t. So what is f doing along this curve? Well, f of t, t equals t to the one-third times t to the one-third, which is t to the two-thirds. Now, it's a fact which follows from the chain rule, which we will learn about shortly, that if f is differentiable, then if you look at f along any parameterized curve, then you'll get a differentiable function of the parameter t. So if f is differentiable, then this f of t, t should be a differentiable function of t. But it's not, because if I look at d, d, t of f of t, t, this is d, d, t of t to the two-thirds, is two-thirds t to the minus one-third. And this is not defined at t equals zero. It blows up to infinity. So that's why f is not differentiable at this point. Now, we could also think about what's happening with the graph. What does the graph look like? Well, we know that on the axes, f is equal to 0. 
So the part of the graph of f over the x and y axes is just the x and y axes themselves. However, along the line y equals x, f is looking something like this. Oops, yes, yeah, so there we go. Um, along the line y equals, is that the line y equals x or y equals minus x? Well, it depends on how you look at the picture. Um, anyway, it's um, sort of near the origin, the graph is a mess. It's not well approximated by any plane. So that's the geometric reason why f is not differentiable at this point.